This message comes from Legal Talk sponsor, Choice New York Management. There are a handful of budget items your building can really control, and a few with payment options. Choice New York Risk Management delivers an insurance financing solution that can help balance out your cash flow. At Choice New York, your home is our priority. Visit choicenewyork.com for more info. Welcome to Legal Talk, a conversation about governance issues that New York's co-op and condo boards are tackling today. I'm Carol Ott with Habitat, the New York City magazine for co-op and condo board directors. My guest today is Ben Flavin, a partner at the law firm of Braverman Greenspun. There is a unique type of co-op in New York City called an HDFC, standing for Housing Development Fund Corporation. They arrived in the late 1970s and 80s when the city acquired distressed residential buildings, rehabbed them, and over the years gave tenants the opportunity to become shareholders. Fast forward to today, and board directors of HDFC co-ops face a myriad of challenges that board directors of market rate co-ops don't. Ben, HDFCs have regulatory documents with New York City that stipulate a lot of the financial details of how the co-op can operate. Where are the areas that often trip up HDFC boards? Well, there are several documents that govern HDFCs, Housing Development Fund Corporations. Most modern HDFCs have a regulatory agreement with generally New York City that outlines many of the financial regulations that the HDFC is subject to. Without that regulatory agreement, some of the older HDFCs are forced to go back and interpret some archaic documents that have changed over the years. It's really sometimes difficult to determine what the regulations are in some of these older documents. And let me ask you, I know the regulatory document is probably not so easy to understand. Do the boards have them? Does the city have them? Who has this document? That's also a good question. Many of the documents, things like the co-ops certificate of incorporation can be, can be obtained from the state. Things like the deed uh, and regulatory agreements are recorded publicly and can be found on ACRIS. And forms of the proprietary lease, the bylaws, and other such documents can be found in the offering plan in their original form. And Hopefully, if the documents and the records of a HDFC have been maintained over the years, they can be found. Let me ask you about flip taxes or transfer taxes, which can be an important funding mechanism. But I understand they work differently in an HDFC. So can you explain how they work and the calculations that the city often requires and why they are different? Sure. The flip tax in an HDFC often depends on when the HDFC was created. Again, many modern HDFCs have a foot tax of a 70-30% ratio. 30% of the profit of the sale goes to the corporation, the HDFC, while 70% of that gain would go to the shareholder. Some HDFCs formed much earlier in the 80s and 90s are subject to what's called a 60-40 flip tax. And in that 60-40 flip tax, 40% of the profit goes back to New York City, while 60% goes to the shareholder. And many times the HDFC itself is left out of the mix. Most of the HDFCs under that 60-40 agreement? Most HDFCs that were subject to that 60-40 agreement, those regulations have expired. And they could, if they have not already, terminate that regulation and adopt their own flip tax. Usually the 60-40 is attached to a loan or some other form of security agreement. And if that agreement has expired, then the HDFC could have that terminated. So the newer HDFCs aren't giving part of their transfer taxes back to the city. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. The policy now is that the co-op itself can benefit more from the flip tax than the city would. And what about subletting in an HDFC? Is that allowed by the city? Yep. Subletting is allowed generally in emergency situations. Many HDFCs are regulated to a limited amount of subletting. 
usually it's a year and a half, 18 months to two years within a five-year period, only on board approval. And beyond that, subletting generally is not allowed. You know, most co-ops don't operate, obviously, with this kind of regulation. How difficult for board directors is it to operate with a city looking over your shoulder? I think it can be very difficult for for boards. HDFCs are co-ops and they go through the daily mechanics of running a housing cooperative in New York City, which in itself is difficult, but they also have the added layer of government regulation. Sometimes those regulations are unclear and boards are forced to interpret those regulations and, and operate accordingly. I'm just curious, do HDFCs, if they have the city looking over their shoulder, must they also have a managing agent or is there somebody else or is it just the HDFC and the city? Many times HDFCs would be required to also have a third party managing agent um, that would, again, take care of the property management, handle things like financial record keeping, paying bills and that sort of thing. HDFCs that do not have that regulatory agreement are often not required to have a third party managing agent and can choose to self manage or choose to hire a managing agent. And so, what are the benefits uh, to the boards and also to shareholders of owning an HDFC apartment? There's a, several benefits to owning an HDFC. HDFCs are, are created to provide affordable housing for people who may not otherwise be able to enter the New York City real estate market, um, be able to own a home and participate in managing of their own home in New York City. Uh, There are also certain tax benefits uh, that lower the cost of owning an HDFC apartment. And and for board directors then, what would your takeaway be for somebody who was elected to the board or who volunteered to be on the board of an HDFC? (laughs) I, I wish that person the best of luck. I think One of the most important things for a board member to do in HDFC is understand the governing documents that regulate that particular HDFC. They've changed over the years. So if if you've read something in the newspaper about an HDFC, you've heard information about HDFCs, I would go back to your particular documents and find out if whatever it is that you may understand applies to your particular co-op. Okay. Thank you very much. I much appreciate your time. Yes, thank you, Carol. I appreciate being here.